seems to me that there is a constant challenge for people of faith to rethink and reimagine how it is that we give substance in the world to our heart commitment to the idea that God is alive and at work amongst us. It's true for every society that seeks to express its faith. They're caught in that dilemma of how do we make evident in our world that which is quite beyond um, our seeing and, and our full knowing in this world. There's a long tradition through the Old Testament of ambivalence to the idea that God can be housed in a building. It's there in the story of the, world, the wilderness wanderings and in the establishment of the monarchy and uh, uh, David's instruction not to build a house for God, even though he himself has a palace in which to live. I'm sure that Jesus in his own time would not be the only person to look at the absolutely magnificent temple that Herod the Great had rebuilt and the huge financial burden that that placed on the whole of the nation of Israel in not only building it but sustaining the cultic life of the temple and to ask questions of whether that was truly the best way to embody the belief in the presence of the Holy One of, uh, of Israel in, in the land. So let's listen and hear that challenge from Jesus to his own age to rethink and reimagine what it might mean to embody our belief in the presence of the Holy One of God himself in our midst. John places this, the cleansing of the temple, very much towards the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Of course, the other Gospels put it um, later, just at the beginning of the Passion story. I don't think that needs to trouble us too much because either way around, the point is more or less the same. That this challenge of Jesus to people of his own time to reimagine what it means to embody the holiness of God is of such significance. Either it begins his ministry or it comes at its very climax, or maybe both. So John chapter 2 starting at verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. And so Jesus confronts a situation in which that honest, no doubt, and, and sincere attempt to embody the belief in the presence of God in the land, the Holy One of Israel, to make the land holy in a temple, how that had got so embroiled in the inequalities and injustices of the world, of the society, uh, that it become uh, quite counterproductive. And listen how, not only is this a story of the monetizing of religion, but also of allowing the inequalities and strata of society to leak into uh, the very cultic practices. You've got reference of cattle, sheep and doves, animals that have had hugely different um, prices attached to them. And the doves at the bottom seem to get particular attention and no doubt from Jesus he could see how um, they were of course were the sacrifices affordable, the only ones affordable by those on the bottom level of society and even for them 
it would have been prohibitively expensive um, to keep themselves involved in the cultic life of the temple. And so here an attempt to embody a belief in the presence of God has become completely over overwhelmed uh, by the injustices of a society that was not living up to the standards of a, a just and righteous God. And here is Jesus offering a, a challenging reimagining of what it means to, to, to embody the presence of God, not in, 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 a, in a building, uh, but in, in a sense of, uh, of his own uh, presence, a relationship with him, and therefore in, in a community of believers committed to the building of the kingdom of God. That's the challenge of Jesus, to reimagine what it means to embody a belief in the presence of God and the holiness of God in our midst. And that belief that we, we carry through into our Christian uh, uh, beliefs and our Christian attempt to, to live out a life. And then what, of course, do we do? We build our own buildings and we don't necessarily call them temples and we don't necessarily monetize them in the same obvious way and, and, and don't um, require that, that, that monetizing of, of, of sacrificial systems. Um, but nonetheless, I suspect we end ourselves in a position where we need to be equally challenged by the Jesus who forces people of his own time to try to reimagine what it means to embody the presence of God within the communities in which we live. And here are we people who at this particular moment are having to find ways of embodying our, our commitments to the God who's in our midst in ways independent of our buildings just at the moment, or at least using our buildings in profoundly different ways. I wonder how we can harness this current moment uh, when our own buildings are having to be either left silent or, or used in different ways. How we can be challenged, as I think we constantly need to, need to be challenged by Jesus, as to how it is that we seek to give body to our belief that God is indeed in our midst. The God of righteousness and justice is in our midst, is alive and at work and challenging us to, to rethink the ways in which we do community, the ways in which we do church, the ways in which we do the faith thing.